Okay. So when we factor, every single time you factor anything forever and always, you always, always, always want to make sure that if there is a greatest common factor in all the terms that you take that out first. So always, always, always factor out the GCF greatest common factor first. Then we're going to choose the number of terms to continue factoring. This is not going to be a whole lot of explanation. You should have done a lot of this last year, and we will continue to do this stuff. Um, the reason why we're reviewing this right now is because on Friday, your 1-4 lesson, you have to remember how to factor. And then when we get to trigonometry, you're going to be factoring terms that are like sine x and sine squared x and cosine x and cotangent and all these cosecant and stuff like that. It's okay. So factoring two terms, um, there's two things that you could look for. You could either look to see if we have a difference of squares. Which would be like a squared minus b squared. Or you could look to see if there's a difference or sum or difference. Hold on, sum or difference. Sum or difference. <laughs> of cubes. And that would be in the form of like a cubed plus b cubed, or it could be a cubed minus b cubed. Those are the only kind of two terms that we can factor besides the GCF. Those are the only kind that we can factor. If you have anything that's not a difference of squares or not a sum or difference of cubes, it's not factorable. Eh, it's not factorable over rational numbers and real numbers. Uh, if you have three terms to factor, I'm going to do that by guess and check. I'm going to use method. It's literally guess and check. Like we're going to guess up and check it. There are some, there's some, um, it's not just completely 100% guess. There's some thought process behind the guess and check, but it's basically guess and check. And we'll do that. And we'll talk about like, tips to help you with that. And then if you have factor four terms, then that is going to be called factor by grouping. And for factor by grouping, there's lots and lots and lots of different ways of doing factor by grouping. There's all kinds of um, times you could use it. We're, able, we're only going to use it in one specific instance, and that's probably what you spent most of your time doing factor by grouping last year. We're not going to get all into the crazy, um, more advanced ways. We're just going to do a, a basic factor by grouping. And then afterwards, 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 you always want to double check any binomial factor that you have left over to see if it's a sum of a sum or difference of cubes or a difference of squares. If it's linear, it's definitely done. If the if the linear if the factor is linear, it's done. You can write that too if you want. If factor is linear, then it's done. You always got to check. In this assignment that I've given you, all of these are going to factor more than one step. It's not going to be just take out the greatest common factor and move on. None of them are going to be like that. They're all going to be multiple steps to get you used to going back and looking. So we're going to start with A. We always want to check for a greatest common factor. Do you see a greatest common factor? Yes. It is an X. So we're going to divide out that X, but it doesn't go away. It goes in front. Um, the GCF is like undistributing. Distributed property, you give the X in, undistributing or factoring it comes out. So the X still has to be there. Then from there, we're not necessarily done. We look inside this parenthesis and we see a trinomial. When we factor a trinomial, we're going to break it apart to two binomials. And we're going to do this by guess and check. I know there's other methods. You can use other methods. I'm just doing one method in class because this works. By guess and check, there's certain things you're going to look at. One thing you can look at is the second sign. If the second sign is negative, then in the parentheses, we're going to have two different signs.
So we're going to have 1 plus and 1 minus. And then this over here tells me the bigger numbers sign. I'm abbreviating number. It's going to tell me the bigger numbers sign. So this is a pretty easy example. We say for guess and check, what times what? I'm doing FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. What times what in my first spot gives me x squared? That's going to be x and x. I'm going to skip the outer and inner. Then I'm going to go to last. The last would be this spot and this spot. What times what gives me 5? That's well, 5 and 1. Those are my only options for 5. So we're, for FOIL, we're doing the F and the... L first. Then we do the O and the I. I get a 5x here. I get a 1x here. And then I have to decide which one's bigger. 5x. So I have to put the bigger sign, which is going to be minus, in a place that will make it a negative 5x. And I have to make sure that this negative 5x and this positive 1x do equal the minus 4x. So there's my check. When I do my outer and my inner, I'm going to check to make sure that it worked, which it did. So we have our final answer. And I'm saying final. <laughs> I didn't go back and check my binomials because I, I forget to do that since I've done it so many times. I know that these can't go further because they're linear. They just have a power of one, so they can't factor any further. I do that subconsciously. I like, I don't even have to look at it. I know they're linear, so I, I forget to remind you guys about that last step there. Okay, question B. We look and see if there is a greatest common factor. Three y to the third. I'll pull that out. And I get y squared minus 16 left over. So now we say, all right, that's a binomial, two terms. Do we have perfect cubes? Or do we have a difference of squares? We don't have, maybe I know what you're talking about. We're looking on the inside at my two terms. The y squared is not going to be a cube right? It's a squared. Is 16 a perfect square? No. Or a square, right? So this would be like, um, you don't have to write this next step. Some people find it handy. This would be like y squared minus four squared. So when we do the next um, step, when we use difference of squares, the formula says, we're going to do what squared? We're going to do one with a plus and one with a minus, and they become linear at that time. If you're not sure if you did it right, you can multiply it back together by using FOIL to make sure that it gives you 16 y squared minus 16 when you're done. Remember the difference of squares formula. You have one plus and one minus. Carter? Oh, it's cubed. I don't, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I know what happened. I was talking and didn't pay attention, but yeah. Thank you. So I know I can't go any further with y plus 4 and y minus 4 because they're linear. Move on to the next one. We've got a greatest common factor of 5z to the second. So I have a trinomial. I'm going to look at that trinomial and I'm going to use whatever it's called. My mind went blank. Guess and check. <laughs> when we have a plus sign, when we're doing guess and check, we have a plus sign over there. That means in our factored part, they will be the same sign.
And then this sign here tells us which sign we use. So this is telling me we're both of them are going to be plus signs. Z times Z makes Z squared. So that's going to go in my first. My last can be nine and one or three and three. We're going to guess it's three and three. And you can check your outer and your inner plus three Z plus three Z. Does that equal plus six Z? Yes. So I've done it right. Except this is not the final factored answer. These are linear, so I can't factor further, but this is not the final factored answer. If you have the exact same factor twice, we simplify that and we write it as z plus 3 squared. You don't leave them separated if they're exactly the same. Okay, so that's basically going through difference of squares, guess and check, taking out the greatest common factor. That's going through a lot of it. There's some student practice. I'm not going to put the student practice in this video because I want to make the video short. So I'm going to move on to... Sum of cubes or difference of cubes. So if you don't know those and you're working on your own, please pay attention now. And then you can go back to doing your own stuff at your own pace. But um, the sum of two cubes has a formula that you memorize and you just plug stuff in. Okay? It's a memorizing formula. You just plug stuff in. Difference of cubes is going to be the exact same formula or there is another formula that you could memorize, but it's really up to you. But it is exactly the same formula. You'll notice for each formula, there is only one minus sign total in the factored part. I, because there's two here, but in the factored part, there's only one minus sign. So if we have the subtraction, we have the difference, then that one minus sign is in the binomial in the two term factor. If it's plus, then it's in the three term factor. <laughs> the last sign is plus for both of them. So that's the only difference between the formulas. They're exactly the same. There's a couple examples written there, but um, I'm just gonna work out. Oh, there's difference of two cubes. I was gonna write it, I guess. <laughs> oh. A list of perfect cubes, uh, if you don't have these memorized handy, uh, I'll make a quick list here. One cubed is one. So if you see a one, that's a perfect cube. Two cubed is eight. Three cubed is 27. Four cubed is 64. Five cubed is 125. Six cubed is 216. Um, I've already done the assignment. I don't think there's anything bigger than 216. So I'm just going to stop there. There are bigger cubes. I, you just won't need them for the assignment. So if you need, if you forget cubes, they're written down for you. All right, we're going to factor x cubed minus 125. So the first thing you want to do is like decide if this is cubes. So 125 is a perfect cube. That's five cubed. So I just rewrote it so that we can see that this is cubes. Now I'm using the formula that's above. You're not seeing it. It's actually right here, <laughs> but it's also above on your paper. The formula says if you have x cubed minus 5 cubed, then we have x minus 5 as our first parenthesis. So we just drop the cube for our first parenthesis. For the second parenthesis, the first term and the last term are just these two squared. So I'm going to square the, the it. They do A's. I'm going to square the A, which is X, and I'm going to square the 5, which is 25. So this expands to X squared and 5 squared. And then the middle 
is the two of these multiplied together. So it would be, it would be minus negative five X, but that becomes plus five X. So there's only one minus sign in the entire factored form. So again, this is a formula that you need to know, but it's pretty easy. Once you have the cubes, they're just like, you drop the cubes for the first one. For the second one, these two are the squares. And then this one is the two just multiplied together. When you have cubes, you will never ever have to check the second parenthesis, the trinomial. The trinomial will already be factored all the way. You won't have to go back and check that. It's done. You will have to check the binomial, but that's linear, so I don't have to go any further with that. So question B, this is in the section of cubes. And I'm looking, and I don't see perfect cubes. But it's in the section that I'm reviewing cubes in. Why? Who can figure it out? Oh, I didn't do the GCF first. We always do the GCF first. So look for your greatest common factor. The greatest common factor for this is 2S squared. And I have 8S to the third plus 27 left over. Those are perfect cubes. So I might take it and write it as 2 cubed s cubed plus 3 cubed. When I rewrite it as 2 cubed s cubed 3 cubed, that allows me to see 2s plus 3 as my first factor. Well, second factor because the GCF is the first factor. The first parenthesis factor comes from these without the cubes. Then we do the squares. So I'm going to do each of these squared. Make sure you have to square the number and the variable. When we've got 2s, we have 4s squared. And then at the end, we have 9. This has to have one minus sign in it. So that one's um, in the middle term. We multiply 2s and 3 and get minus 6s. You don't get minus 6s, but the formula is to put a minus here. And then we get 6s. Success. Success. Um, and then this is linear, so that cannot go further. I've already told you when you do the cube formula, the trinomial will never go further. So I don't even need to check it. You can check it if you forget, but it's extra wasted time. It'll never go further. So those are cubes. And then I'm going to skip the student practice. Factor by grouping. When we factor by grouping, we have four terms. And we're going to always, always, always want a plus sign in, our, in the middle. And you'll see this does not have a plus sign. So we're going to use math magic, math magic, and we're going to make that into a plus sign. Ready? Plus a negative. There we go. We have a plus sign. We've done it. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my first two and my last two terms, but that plus sign has to be in between the groups. As soon as I've made groups, now you're going to factor the groups completely separate from each other. We're going to look at these separate. We're not even going to look at the negative 4z plus 20. We're only looking at z cubed plus 5z squared. And you say, how do we factor? We factor GCF. Is there a GCF? Yes, there is. It is a z squared. So I'm going to take out that z squared. And I'm going to be left with z plus 5. Now I'm done with that for a little bit. We're going to go over to the other group and we're going to ignore that other, the first group. We're going to look at the second group only. We're going to say, is there a greatest common factor? Is there? Yeah. So since they're both negative, that is common. I'm going to take out negative four out of both of these. And instead of writing plus negative four, I'm just going to write minus four. It's the same thing. And then what's left over will be z plus 5. So I've factored individual groups. When we come back to this, 
and we go back to factoring this equation. And what I've done is I've taken four terms and I've made it into two terms. I've taken four full terms and I've changed it into two terms. This is a term and this is a term. And our first step of factoring always is there a greatest common factor. So you look at my two underlying terms. Is there something that's the same? Mm -hmm. The z plus 5 is the same for both of those. So I'm going to factor it out. Z plus 5. That will cancel these. And I have left over z squared minus 4. Now we have two binomials factored next to each other. I know z plus 5 is done because it's linear. But what about z squared minus 4? It's not linear. Is it difference of squares? Yeah, it's difference. And they're both perfect squares. I don't have to think about cubes because it's difference of squares. So now I've got z plus 5 comes down. That one's done. And then this is going to become 2. If you want to rewrite it as um, 2 squared, you can. This will be z plus 2 and z minus 2. Those are all linear, so I know I'm done. So that is grouping. All right. I'm going to skip the student practices. If you need help, because I only did one of those examples, if you need help, you can ask me. I'm going to go to question A here. If we have time, A, B, and I'm going to do one from the homework. So A, <clears throat> is there a greatest common factor? Leah? No. There's not. They're like... You know that they are like something special, but they don't have any factors in common, so I can't do the GCF. So there's two terms. We've got two options. We're looking for cubes or we're looking for squares. Squares is not cubes, but we can write this as squares. So this next step, you don't have to write this next step, but I do want to show you. This would be like 4 squared x squared squared minus 9 squared. So we have squares for every little part. So this is a difference of squares. We're going to write it as 4x squared plus 9, 4x squared minus 9. These are not linear. So I have to go back and check to see if they're finished factoring. So I look at 4x squared plus 9, and I say, do we have a difference of squares? So when I say the word difference, that means is it subtraction? No. If it's not a difference of squares, it's not going to factor. So I move on. Is this one a difference of squares? Yeah. Everything's squared in there and it is subtraction. So 4x squared plus 9 does not go further. But the second one does. It becomes 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Those are linear so I don't need to go back and check them. Okay, question B. Is there a greatest common factor? There is 3p squared. So I factored out 3p squared, and I'm left with p to the 6 plus 5p cubed plus 6. This is a trinomial, three terms. So we see if we do guess and check. Both signs are the same because of the second plus sign. The signs that they are is the first one, so plus. And then we have to say what times what gives me p to the 6. Hint, it's in the middle. p to the 3rd 
P to the third. When I multiply those together, I get P to the sixth. Hint, it's in the middle to help you out. And then what times what is going to be six? Could be one and six, could be two and three. But you, you've, been, you've been doing factoring enough that you could probably see that it's two and three. You could double check. You could check it by doing outer inner, and it is. So now these are not linear. We need to double check to see if they can go further. And just looking at them, I see P cubes. So I'm going to see if these are cubic. No? Josh, no? Right. So two is not a perfect cube. Three is not a perfect cube. And because of that, they can't, they can't go any further. So we're done. All right. And then the one that I'm going to do for, from your assignment is number six. I'm just going to cross out this number eight here and put it in this spot. But it's number six from your assignment because I didn't have any like this in here. And number six is a little bit complicated. Who has the assignment open? I can read you the number six. Do you have it? Can you read it to me? Three, two, three, six, minus 17, Thank you. My handwriting was a little, a little bad on that. Fix those real fast. Okay, so we've got, so if you don't have the assignment open, you can just write this down in your notes and then copy it over later or just try it later and check your answer with your, with your notes. Um, 3Q to the 6th minus 17Q to the 5th minus 28Q to the 4th. Um, I look for a GCF and there is a GCF. However, it's only the Qs. So I've got Q to the 4th. Makes it easier. But what makes this one more complicated than others is because there's a three in front. It's going to make it more complicated. Because there's a three in front, I know it has to be three Q and Q. Those are my only options. If I had a four Q squared in front, I could be two and two, or I could be four and one. So at least I have a prime number. It's only three and one. That's it. I know that the signs are going to be different because of this minus sign back here, but I'm going to wait to put the signs in because I don't know where they're going to go. And I start thinking about what can make 28, like 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. So here's the ultimate guess and check. What pair you guys want to use? Just which one do you want to try? Yes, which one do you want to try? Four and seven. Let's use four and seven. Okay, so I'm going to put seven here, and I'm going to put four here. This is a total guess and check. And you know what? I'm going to do it in different colors so you can just see. This is the guess and check. What did I say? Seven, four. So if I do that, here's my checking part. I'm going to have 12Q and 7Q. Is there any possible, possible way to get 17 with these numbers? There's no possible way. So I know that it's either not four and seven or they're in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna switch spots first. So that's gonna give me four Q and that's gonna give me 21 Q. Is there a possibility of getting 17? Right, if I subtract them. And like I talked about already, we have to have two different signs. So it is gonna be subtraction. The bigger one has to be minus. So down here, it's the 21 that has to be minus. So now I can use this to go back up and say 7 has to be minus to make that work. They are linear, so I'm done. That's like the hardest ones that you'll have in your assignment would be, and this is number six in the assignment. That's like the hardest ones you'll have is when you've got a trinomial and there's a number in the front and the back. Those are the hardest ones on the assignment, okay? Um, and then if you have questions, make sure you ask me. This will be due Friday. I do not have the upload yet, but it will be due Friday.